Hello, and thank you so much for joining me as I decorate this fall-themed boho baby shower cookie set. This first cookie is a little girl's onesie outfit with some lace ruffles. I'm going to use a brush embroidery technique to create the ruffled look using outline consistency icing as you see here. Next, take a dry paintbrush and just pull the icing down with the brush to get the look that you're wanting. If you need to add more icing, you can, or if you've added too much icing and you need to take some away, just do that with your paintbrush to achieve the look that you're wanting. There's no right or wrong with this, it's just a matter of preference. going to repeat the process on the other side of the onesie and try to get them to look as even as possible. Again, if you need to add more icing, you can. Once I'm done, I'm going to take my paintbrush and just kind of swipe down where I'm going to add the colored icing next so that I don't have to worry about bumps and lines of the brush embroidery. I'm using taupe colored icing. It looks more green in this video than it did in real life. It's, it's plain taupe icing here to do the top part of this outfit. I'm going to put little squiggles in the center to help prevent cratering of this little center section. Next, I'm going to fill in this section with fled icing. You want to make sure that you're adding enough icing to prevent any divots in your icing. Then I'll use my scribe tool to even everything out and make sure that the icing is pulled down to the edges where I want it. Next, I'm going to go ahead and outline the bottom section of this outfit. I'm adding outline next to my taupe color just to keep the separation between the two different icings since they're both wet at the same time. I'm not going to fill in this section with squiggles because it's a larger section. I'm just going to go ahead and flood it, being very careful as I flood next to the top part to not blend those two together. I do want to keep that separation. As you see, I've left a little space next to that outline, but I've done that on purpose so that I can kind of push the icing into that space rather than flooding all the way up onto that outline. Again, make sure you've added enough icing in the center portion and then just scribe it smooth. Popping a little air bubbles here and there and making sure that my icing is all the way to the edge how I like it to be. Now I'm gonna go ahead and outline details just with my outline icing. I did not wait for this top part to dry, but it has been sitting while I've done the bottom part. But my outline icing is thick enough that it's not going to sink in at this point into the top layer. In fact, outlining it while it's still wet will prevent the outlines from being fragile and breaking as easily as it would if you waited for it to dry completely. I'm going to go ahead and add an outline across the top just to hide the little outline marks next to the bottom section. I'm going to allow this to dry for about 30-40 minutes before adding my pumpkin detail on. If you are able to add details onto cookies that are not completely dry, you are going to prevent craters. So I like to add my details within an hour of my basic flooding. This is just an outline icing that I'm using for the pumpkin. So I'm having to flatten it out with my scribe. 
I'm gonna allow these two little sections to dry for about 10-15 minutes before I add the center section of the pumpkin. I'm going ahead and adding the center section. Again, the outer edges have been drying for about 15 minutes before I did this step. And then my final step will be to scribe that smooth and add a little stem. The icing in this bag is thick icing for florals. And there's our cute little onesie cookie. The next cookie that we're going to decorate is a baby bottle. I'm just going to outline the top here with my cream and the bottom with cream as well. I'll go ahead and put squiggles in this top section because as you can see, it's a smaller section, so it will tend to crater as it dries. Where this lower section will not need squiggles because it's large enough, craters won't form. The four little holes that you see in this cookie were created um, before I baked the cookie with a fork. And the purpose of that is to help the cookie bake evenly and to help prevent spreading. Quite honestly, I don't know that that really works, but it's kind of one of those things that's a habit now, so I continue to do it. I'm just filling in the cookie with my flood icing. Making sure to fill in all these little gaps because I don't want holes in my icing or craters in my icing. Then I'll go ahead and fill in this top section with the same flood, and then I'll flatten everything out with my scribe. Just pulling my icing down to the edges where I want it. Once I'm done with this, I'm gonna let this cookie crust over for about 20 minutes before moving on to the lid. Again, I'm just using taupe icing and I am outlining next to both sections that I've already flooded just to help keep that separation between all the sections. I will fill this area in with squiggles because it will most likely crater. It will probably crater even with squiggles, but I'm gonna do the best I can to help prevent that. I'm carefully flooding in this area because I don't wanna go over the nipple area or the bottom part of the area of this bottle. I'm gonna let that sit for a while. And as you can see, there is a small crater in my lid. I'm now taking outline icing to create a little pumpkin detail. Again, this cookie is not completely dry. It's been sitting about 30 minutes total before I've gotten to this little pumpkin detail part. Once those have set for about 10 more minutes, I'm gonna do the center part of this pumpkin and add a little stem. The final cookie that I'm gonna show you in this set is a monogram floral pumpkin cookie. I'm outlining with outline consistency icing and taupe. And I will follow that with flood taupe icing.
It's very important as you're flooding to make sure that you fill in all these little areas that seem to be lower than the rest of the areas of flood. A great way to help make sure that your cookie is even after you've flooded it is to poke it with the scribe right in the center and do a really fast jiggle that will help level out your icing. I allow this flood to dry for about 30 minutes, long enough that I was able to write with an edible food marker. I use the Sweet Sugar Bell food marker for this to outline the M. And I'm just going to go carefully over this outline, making sure that I am completely covering the marker with my icing. Again, you do not want your cookie to be completely dry before moving on to this step or you are gonna suffer craters within this monogram design. The other way I will help prevent craters for this monogram is to add an outline right in the center of the area that I'm going to be flooding in just a minute. And now I'm just going to flood in these bigger sections on the monogram letter. I'll use my scribe to help even out the flood as well as pull the flood over the bottom part and top parts of these letters just so that it's all blended in well. I am now using outline icing to create my details. This is a little grassy detail. If your outline gets messed up, or it's too thick in one area because this outline is pretty solid. You can wait just a couple minutes for it to dry and use your scribe to pull it off. This section does not need to be perfect. In fact, a little bit of imperfection actually makes it look more realistic. So don't get so carried away with having perfectly straight lines. And I'm just gonna do this until I'm happy with the way it looks. There's no right or wrong again. I think I like how that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some green leaves using floral consistency thick icing. I've cut my bag just into the shape of a V to create this leaf tip look. Now I'm going to pipe um, a few rosettes. This is a number eight open star tip from PME. Two different shades I'm using the same tip and then using a little bit smaller star tip, number seven, I'm just piping little stars for added floral details. I'm using lighter shades and darker shades, depending what color the rosette initially was. And then add a few more green leaves. detail. I'm using a thicker outline icing before using my outline icing that's coral colored. This coral icing was a little thin and I was worried that it would crater so I used a thicker outline 
to make these little pumpkins. Again, you're gonna let this dry before adding the center portion of the pumpkin and stem. Unfortunately, I forgot to record the last part of this pumpkin, but you get the point. Super cute. Thank you so much for following along on this cookie decorating journey, and I hope that you enjoyed these cookies and learned a little something.